today's conversation will focus on the best medications in 2023 for diabetes. As an integrative endocrine specialist, I approach this topic from both a medical and a holistic standpoint. When discussing which medications may be our best options, it is important to note that different treatments actually work for different type of people and only a physician can assess individual needs and make the best judgment call for any of you. Well, with modern advances in science and technology, we increasingly have access to a variety of high-tech solutions, right? Such as natural treatments too. And we, how do we make them high-tech? By purifying them, putting in capsules, right? But I'm telling you, in the upcoming years, I'm confident that there will be even more medical solutions, more medications, and maybe even more holistic approaches because we are rediscovering them every day. So I would say stick around for more information about the right medication for you after watching this video. So as type 2 diabetes continues to plague millions of people around the world, many actually have taken notice of that recent influx of advertisements for new treatments. A lot of you are skeptical, right? But I'll tell you about a class that has been very important. GLP-1 receptor agonists and SGLT2 inhibitors. These are two relatively new medication classes. They're relatively expensive, but they really help a lot with diabetes control, and I know a lot of you are on it. There are traditional medications that most people also take, like metformin, galipizide, galimipride, and insulin, and things like that, which they're not my favorite at all. But not only these newer drugs can help lower your blood sugar levels, but they also have shown evidence that they may actually reduce the cardiovascular risk and kidney disease risk and so forth. Now, a novel approach to treating this diabetes, this chronic illness, with the GLP-1 receptor agonists like Ozempic, Trulicity, Victoza, uh, Mungero, Rubelsis, these are the GLP-1 agonist drugs, and SGLT-2 inhibitors such as Jardians, Farsiga, Inmokana, etc. They come with their side effects. Don't get me wrong, I'm not just trying to give you this pink picture of how great they are. They definitely have a lot of short and long-term side effects. But if you need to choose the better of the evil, like out of all these diabetic medications, which one would you choose? I would still choose, if I have to take a medication for diabetes, I would still choose a GLP-1 agonist and a SGLT-2 inhibitor if the natural remedies, your own lifestyle changes, etc. are not helping. A lot of times people use sugar MD advanced glucose support, superberberine, and they're all set, right? But some of you, either because of failure of the lifestyle changes or other factors or genetic factors, you name it, some of you still need medications. And for those of you, I think it is important to know which medications are really the best ones. So in my opinion, again, GLP-1 class and SGLT-2 inhibitors, as long as you are a good candidate for those medications, they will be good for you. Now, there are a lot of advertisements on TV, right? And you are bombarded with a lot of information. Uh, they promote the benefits. They half the time cover up a lot of major side effects or sometimes you misunderstand things and you think that the minor side effects are major. So it is always important to understand what is going on exactly with discussing with your doctor, watching my videos, reading about them, going to sugarmds.com. We have a lot of information for all of you. If your doctor is not giving you all that information, right? So a lot of times, doctors will also overlook certain things uh, like lifestyle changes that, or holistic treatments. Uh, it could be even herbal or acupuncture treatments, whatever, you name it. But this is because the limited time they have during the appointment, uh, they have lack of resources, lack of training in providing nutritional advice or holistic advice. But either way, you need to be holistic yourself, right? And if you are taking a medication, 
you need to know your options. You need to understand what you can take it together with and educate yourself, most importantly. So social and environmental factors are playing a huge role. So it's not just the medication. So for example, if you cannot afford the medication or if you cannot take the side effects or if you have a contraindication to it or there are things in your life that prevents you from taking those medications, then even if they are the best medications, they're not going to work for you. So the best medication is the medication that works for you, right? But also GLP-1 receptor agonists, for example, come with extra benefits such as reduction in cardiovascular risk. Same thing with SGLT2 inhibitors. They also reduce the cardiovascular risk. They can increase the length of the time that your kidneys survive and so forth. As you know, most GLP-1 medications needs to be injected under your skin, so you may not be a big fan of that. Rebelsis is a pill in that class. It is the only pill that actually uh, offers similar benefits to the Victoza or Zampic Trulicity, which are the injectable ones, right? And the latest one is Mongero, which is terzipatide, and these are all potentially, uh, and some of them are proven to reduce cardiovascular disease in people suffering from diabetes. Now, a lot of you also love these medications because they also help with weight loss. Not that all of you are trying to lose weight, but a lot of people are enjoying that as a side effect. They also enjoy the nausea and vomiting and occasional pancreatitis, but that's their decision, right? Uh, and some people don't have any side effects at all, so which is great. But, you know, especially in the beginning, you are expecting a little bit of a nausea from these medications. Now, SGLT2 inhibitors, the Jardines, for example, or in Mokana or Farsiga, they are still branded. They are still uh, very expensive. They have a few side effects, but they have also impressive benefits. What are they? Again, cardiovascular risk reduction, protecting your kidneys. The way they work is by blocking the absorption of sugar in your kidneys. As a result, you basically dump the sugar in the restroom and just leave it there. And basically, it also helps with the weight loss. It helps with the, uh, the water retention and so forth, which also helps with the heart as a result. GLP-1 receptor agonists work a little differently. They are more like a gastrointestinal hormones. They basically tell your body that there is food in your system, so stop picking out. And basically saying that you're fat, you don't have to eat anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, these are the things that sometimes with diabetes are broken chains that is fixed with these medications. However, we have to give extra physiologic doses, like high, very high doses, which why these medications will sometimes bring the side effects. So it's always a wise idea to start very slow and increase your dose gradually with any medication. That way you can avoid potentially costly and dangerous side effects. Communicate with your doctor. Uh, if you think that something is not right with that medication, just stop it. And if you have to go to ER, go to ER. But I've seen people taking the medication, although they're vomiting their guts out, they still take the medication. I'm like, why did you do that? You know, it's just common sense. If a medication is hurting you, stop the medication. You know, of course, you call your doctor, you go to ER. I'm not saying, you know, just stop cold turkey, but don't be stubborn saying that, oh, yeah, I'm going to lose weight. I have to take this medication and then keep vomiting, getting dehydrated and going into kidney failure. It's just not going to be to your best interest. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you understand the best medications that you can choose for diabetes. Uh, they all have advantages and disadvantages. It may work for one of you, but it may not work for another one of you. So it is always best to discuss these with your doctor. And if you want to take a holistic approach, definitely visit sugarmds.com. They will help you tremendously as well. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.